Hello, fifth grade mathematicians. Today we're going to be reviewing a lesson and uh, actually reviewing two skills that we've talked about this year. The first is the reviewing division of whole numbers and decimals. In lesson 2.7, we reviewed long division using the partial quotient algorithm and then the traditional column division method the divide, subtract, multiply, and bring down. And we worked with whole numbers in that lesson. Today we're going to be reviewing our class lesson of dividing whole numbers and decimals. So we learned that through estimation we, could, we can determine where to insert a decimal point in our quotient. So if we looked at this problem, 96 and 2 tenths divided by 13, we see a decimal point in the dividend. First, we're going to come up with an estimation. And I'm going to say 13 is close to 10, if I were going to choose between 10 and 20. And 96 is close to 100 or 90. So if I look at my estimation as 90, we'll grab my pen, 90 divided by 10 my estimation would be 9. And if I did 100 divided by 10, my estimation would be 10. So I'm feeling that my quotient will be somewhere between 9 and 10. So if I use the partial quotients method, I'm dividing by 13. I know that 10 13s would be 130. Right now I'm going to ignore the decimal point and just look at this as a, a whole number. 962 divided by 13. Once I get my answer, I'm going to use my estimation to help me determine where to put the decimal point in my quotient. So if this were 962 divided by 13, and I were thinking about how many 13s are in 962, 10 13s would be 130, 20 13s would be 260. So with partial quotients, I'm going to be subtracting. So I've got 702 left, and that was 20 13s. And then I know there could be another 260. And I'm going to subtract and get 442. So that's another 20. And it looks like I can do another 20, which would be another 260. And that leaves me with 182. And I knew that 10 13s was 130. So I'll use that here to get 100, or excuse me, there's my eraser to get 52, and then there are four 13s in 52. So I've got 20, 40, 60, 74, and I'm going to put that in my quotient, 7, 4, and if I look at my estimate, my estimate is around 9. So it tells me that my decimal point needs to go right here so that the quotient is 7 and 4 tenths. 96 and 2 tenths divided by 13 is 7 and 4 tenths. And again, I use my estimation to determine where to put that decimal point. So. Example two, I'm rewriting a whole number division problem to find quotients to a certain number of decimal places. So in this problem, I have 122 divided by 8. It's $122, so I know that dollars are represented by dollars and cents, and cents is two decimal places. So I'm going to rewrite that problem as 122.00. That represents my cents. And I'm going to do this problem in column edition. So I'll grab my pen, 1, 8 in 
12. I'll bring down that 2. I've got 5 eighths in 42. Divide, multiply. I'm going to subtract. I'm going to bring down this next number. How many eighths in 20? 2 times 8 is 16. I'm going to subtract and bring down my final digit, 0. How many eighths in 40? 5. Now, again, because we said this is dollars and cents, my decimal point is going to go right there. $15.25. So $122 divided eight ways would be $15.22. And I can put my dollar sign right there. So I rewrote my problem as a whole number with a decimal. In this next example, I'm going to do the same thing. My division problem is 47 divided by 12, and I am wanting to divide it to two places. So right away, I'm going to put my decimal point in two places. If I were going to estimate the answer to this problem, I know a math fact. 48 divided by 12 equals 4. So my estimate is that my answer should be somewhere close to 4. So now I'm going to do the problem. How many 12s are in 47? 3. 3 times 12, 36. Subtract. Bring down this next 0. How many 12s in 110? 9 times 100. 9 times 12 is 108. Subtract. Bring down that final digit right here. How many 12s in 20? 1 times 12 is 12. Subtract with the remainder of 8. I'm going to stop because I was told to divide to two decimal places. Now if I look at my estimate, 48 divided by 12 is 4. I know that my decimal point is going to go right there, 3 and 91 hundredths. I could also round this to 3 and 92 hundredths because this remainder is more than half of 12. So I see that I can divide, adding decimal places, dividing with a quotient to one or two decimal places is very customary. So that's our review of dividing whole numbers and decimals. Now on Monday, our work is going to focus on scientific notation, and we're going to be converting or changing between scientific and standard and standard and scientific. Earlier in the chapter, in Lesson 2.4, we talked about exponential notation. So right here is a definition of scientific notation. It's a way to represent big and small numbers with only a few symbols. Because if we have to write the number 5 trillion, we use a lot of digits. So scientific notation is a way to do this in a little easier way. A number in scientific notation is the product of two factors. The first factor is going to be at least 1, but less than 10. And the second factor will be a power of 10. And these are for positive exponents. We can also have our first factor be between 0 and 1, if we've got a decimal. And the second factor will be a power of 10 with a negative exponent. So the number 400 million right here is in standard notation right now, the typical way we see a number. To write it in scientific notation, I'm going to write that first factor 4 as its number. I'm going to multiply it by a power of 10. And I know that I've got eight zeros, eight places here, to represent 400 million in scientific notation. I would write 4 times 10 to the 8th power. Here's a little chart that gives you some information. You might want to pause the video and study this chart for a little while. 
It's showing you how to change from standard notation to scientific notation. So in the first problem, we've got 8,700,000, and our decimal point is at the end of the number. It's an invisible decimal point usually, but it's there. I find that decimal point, and I imagine the decimal point as if it isn't there. I'm going to move that decimal point so that I get a number with just one digit, because you remember we said scientific notation is a product of two factors, and the first factor is at least one less than 10. So 8.7, 8 and 7 tenths would fit that criteria. That's my first factor. Then I'm going to count the number of places I move the decimal point. One, two, three, four, five, six. That represents my power of 10, 10 to the sixth power. When I put the two together, I've got my first factor, 8.7, 8 and 7 tenths, times my power of 10, 10 to the sixth power. I can do this with a decimal also. Here's my decimal place. If I move it, I'm going to move it to between 5 and 6 because then I've got a number that's at least 1 and less than 10. 5 and 6 tenths fits that criteria. I moved the decimal point 1, 2, 3, 4 places, all right? But my original number was less than 1. So that exponent is going to be a negative exponent. So when I rewrite this number, which is in standard notation, to scientific notation, I have the factor 5 and 6 tenths, 5.6, times 10 to the negative fourth. There's my power of 10. So again, I've given you a couple of examples to solve. Pause the video, take these numbers written in standard notation, and write them in scientific notation with a factor and a power of 10. So pause the video now. When you're done, begin again. So now our next example is the opposite conversion. We're changing from scientific notation to standard notation. So we've got our first factor, 8.7. We've got our power of 10, 10 to the sixth power. So if the exponent is positive, as this is, I'm going to move my decimal point to the right this many places. So I've got 8.7. I move it six places to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now I've got my number in standard notation. I can also do this with a negative exponent of 10. This time, though, my decimal point is going to move to the left. And we've done this in class. 5.6 times 10 to the negative fourth. My 5.6, the decimal will move to the left four places. And I will end up with 0 0.00056. So again, I write, I've got my factor, my power of 6. I move the decimal point to the right. If it's a positive power of, of 10, to the left if it's a negative power of 10. And here are some additional examples for you to solve. 5 times 10 to the third, 6 and 2 tenths times 10 to the second, and 1 and 23 hundredths times 10 to the negative third. Pause the video, and actually this is the end of our video. Stop the video and solve these three problems, and we'll be talking about them in class on Monday. I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend, and again, we'll be working on division, and we'll be working on scientific notation.